episode of Backstage with Next Stage. I'm your host, Candace Rawls. I have a new last name. I recently got married. Yay! <laughs> Uh, but I'm also, oh, thank you. I'm also the marketing manager here at Next Stage. And I am joined by Helen Hope Kimbrough, who is a consultant here at Next Stage, as well as Janet Irvin, who is our chief marketing officer. Welcome, ladies. Thank and you. today we're talking all about asset framing and why asset framing is so important. Now, Asset framing is like a newer concept for a lot of people, myself included. I haven't really heard of asset framing before, you know, doing research for this video. So what does this phrase mean? So asset framing is defining people by their aspirations and contributions rather than by their deficits or challenges. So really saying um, great things about, you know, people or envisioning purpose inside of people or seeing their potential um, inside of them rather than seeing the surroundings that they come from or the conditions that they may be a part of. So um, that's a way to define asset framing. Okay, I like that. The hopes and aspirations rather than, you know, their challenges. Um, because when I was doing research, I also read that the brain picks up negativity more than it does positivity. So if we're leading with people's challenges all the time, that's kind of what we're going to hold on to in our brains. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it's something that, you know, we see across all angles. We see it, you know, in the media, especially, mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes you can see it organizationally and educationally as well. Um, specifically when you're talking about testing or grades or something like that. Um, you really want to um, push people to um, be successful in some of those areas. And a way to do it is just by um, either speaking or breathing life into it so that they, the person on the other side can see the fullness of it too, or the potential of it. Mm. Yes. So Helen, how do you feel like asset framing played a role in your upbringing? Um, as I was preparing and writing the blog uh, for this, um, I actually thought about my kindergarten teacher. Um, and um, in my upbringing, like I grew up in a rural uh, community at first mm -hmm. uh, before moving to a college town. And so, you know, the community was really uh, close knit, close knit family. But my kindergarten teacher was really like this iconic figure, like in the community. And she had a small school, but um, within that school, she you know, would make us work harder than probably students that attended other schools. Um, it felt like her reputation was on the line. She was gonna make certain that we got the information that we received. And so, um, as a kid, you know, if there was something that you couldn't master, she would basically say, no worries, you can do it. I believe in you. Mm. I trust that you will get this information. I'm going to talk to your family so that they can help you, you know, with your math or they can help you with reading or they can help you learn these sounds or your letters. And so she would always say practice makes perfect. And so you would really, you know, go into your home or, you know, practice with your friends. But, um, but she was really that person who even now I still think about in terms of, you know, asset framing, mm -hmm. seeing, seeing us beyond um, our current living situations or beyond our current circumstances, because the goal was she wanted us to be ready for first grade. And so she knew that she had to drill that information into us so that we would be ready and we would be prepared so that we could compete with other people who were not from our areas or from our neighborhoods. And so she was fervent um, in that. And um, so I, it's the teachers who you consider, you know, mean because we thought she was mean, but it was, it's those teachers that you remember, like she was mean, but she really, she, she got us together to the next mm -hmm. level or to the next steps. So that's a favorable example. And, um, you know, but the other side of asset framing is I've been more on the deficit side than the asset side 
where people didn't really believe in my value or my potential or my voice. Um, they really did not want me in spaces or uh, maybe have maybe talked down to me when I was really there to, you know, gain a presence or to uh, gain some understanding or some, or, you know, some educational type of opportunities or, or pursuits. And so I've been uh, more on those receiving sides, which don't feel well. And so, you know, the brain absorbs those just like it absorbs asset framing, it also absorbs the deficit framing where um, you probably end up replaying those negative situations uh, in your mind. Um, whereas if they were positive, you could play those in your mind as well. Wow. Yeah. I, I just think it's so interesting that sometimes people aren't even aware of these biases that they have when they are speaking to people. Um, but I do love that you do have some positive examples that you can focus on and replay in your mind. Um, and yes, teachers just play such an important role. So I think it's asset framing is such an important thing that everybody needs to just pay more attention to. I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah, I mean, yes. in our personal life, and then as well in the organizations we serve, right? Because I think, mm -hmm. I think organizations tell so many stories, whether you're a nonprofit or a corporate and working with organizations and neighborhoods, I mean, we have the ability to either perpetuate narratives or to shape new narratives. And, yeah. and the way we tell stories, I think, is so important. And I've been on, you know, the right side of that and the wrong side of that. So, you know, I mean, um, Helen, we were talking about that earlier. I think um, asking the right questions and, and really being very conscious of the way we're shaping a narrative is so important. Yeah, I heartily agree. I agree, too. So what other things can organizations do to do a better job of asset framing as they engage with the community? So some ways that I think organizations can um, reframe their narratives, um, their dialogues, um, is to really um, do their research, um, research the families that they're serving, um, research um, and you know, ask pertinent questions um, to really understand uh, the people who they are serving, um, doing community listening sessions, um, also surveys, just to gather information. So it's really data information and gathering. Um, another component uh, would be uh, to review images of marketing campaigns um, and images that are utilized in fundraisers. Uh, sometimes I feel specifically within the nonprofit um, arenas or corporate uh, arenas, sometimes it's just organizations would find the most demeaning pictures of persons or families and uh, really try to cast a narrative that would be negative to the person that they were talking about. Um, so there is a way to frame it positively and favorably and to provide that asset framing um, to uphold the persons that they're talking about, but also to, you know, build brand awareness and also to, you know, increase uh, funding for an organization. So those are some, some things that I would, you know, like to highlight. Yeah, and I, I would just love to highlight um, last summer on our um, What's Next episode, we hosted um, Janon Marshall from WFAE, and she said this, and it's just stuck with me ever since, but to be so aware of the questions you're asking, because the way we ask questions also has the ability to shape a narrative. So she gave the example of someone um, in an interview she was in one time asking, you know, what was it like to grow up poor? And she said, you know, if you drop the poor and just say, what was it like for you to grow up? You gain this deeper, richer understanding of what they think is important. And so you're not mm. pre-categorizing them into these buckets. You're giving them the ability to shape their own narrative and to share their own story and to identify what they think is important, whether that's assets or challenges or whatever they want to bring forward. So that's that's always really stuck with me as just a simple fix. You know, it's just reviewing the questions to give people room to shape their own narrative. I love that. This has been such a, a great conversation that I think that we're all going to walk away with even the audience on ways we can be better at asset framing in our personal and our professional lives and 
organizations as well. So thank you ladies for sharing these wonderful tips with us. You know, I'm going to be more aware of, you know, if I'm speaking life to people and what stories and questions am I asking people? And I'm sure the audience will too. So thank you. Um, but if you guys are interested in even learning even more tips about asset framings, make sure you check out our blog post on nextstage-consulting.com. And I'll leave the link for that in the description box. But until next time, we will see you later for another episode of Backstage with Next Stage.